Well, hey there, Mission Control. We continue our System Challenges series today, and we're going to talk about the digester. Uh, I've got a few things to go over with the digester, so I'm going to break it up into a few parts. But uh, today, I wanted to quickly go over um, just the, the, the largest challenge of all, which is loading the system. So uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, some faculty members from Washington State University come to our location. We did a nice walk through them with them. It was really cool having them here. And we're going over all the different pieces of the system and, and walking through everything. And by far, the thing that's most interesting, of course, is the digester, because that's kind of what we're doing differently than everybody else. You know, people have greenhouses, people have aquaponics, hydroponics, they have indoor growing uh, greenhouses and microgreens and all that. Um, but people have solar panels as well. What we're trying to do is integrate solar, wind potentially, uh, the digester, aquaponics. Uh, and the indoor growing and, and everything associated with that all together into one system with automation um, that is sustainable. And the key to our success is the digester, which is the area I'm standing on. So you can go back if you're brand new to the channel and check out our system overview series. But the digester is super, super critical to everything because it can produce power for us and heat uh, when the solar panels or wind uh, are not working. And we don't have wind right now, but that's one of the three sources of power we were looking at. The problem with the digester is loading it. And we come to find out with the folks help from Wazoo that that's the same problem everybody else is having. And uh, yeah, and all the research and everything I did didn't find that because, and Wazoo even talked about it, is a lot of people focus on the science of what happens inside of the digester and these systems that are small scale digesters, uh, the, the big guys don't have these problems, but the small scale ones do. Um, they, they focus their research on what's going on inside and these small scale ones are kind of like one offs so, or you know, they load it, they seal it, they let it do its thing, they take all their measurements, do their experiments, and then uh, they stop, unload it, do it again. But we're looking at a continuous feed system and the, the problem is feeding it with material. So what type of material do we want to load? Well, we want to load basically everything we possibly can because the more stuff you can load, the more methane you can get off of this thing the more methane you can get off of it, the more things you can run, like cooktops, hot water heaters, um, heating for this building, uh, the floors in our house even, uh, which we don't turn them on because they cost too much to run, but uh, those are all things that are potential, potentially able to be powered by the digester technology. So, uh, we want to load as much stuff in there as we possibly can. What are those things? Well, let's start with the house. So all your yard waste, leaves, uh, grass clippings, all those things are awesome. Dead plants, you know, that you rip up, roots and everything. All of that is awesome digester uh, food because it has lots of, uh, what are the right things? It has, well, essentially it has lots of nutrients in it that the bacteria like to eat. I forget the name of it. Uh, man, horrible time to have a brain fart, but anyway, uh, the more plant-like stuff that you have, the more kind of gushy, squishy stuff that you have, the more material, the raw material that I cannot remember the name of, there's, anyway, the nutrients that the bacteria, the methanogens, uh, eat and convert into methane. So, maybe it's just, uh, anyway, I can't remember. Uh, so, we want to get table scraps in there, which means apple cores, uh, watermelon rinds, cantaloupe rinds, um, lettuces, you know, leftover salad, um, all those things are excellent. Uh, leftovers minus the bones. You could put bones in there, but they, event they take longer to digest and uh, just mess up the system. So let's just avoid those if we can. Uh, anyway, get that all down in the digester. That's really what we want to do from the house. So you got your, your yard waste, you have your table scraps, all those things. Uh, and then you get out to your barn and you got your horse manure, cow manure, chicken manure. All those things are excellent sources uh, for the digester. So let's talk about the problem with all those. So the problem with those things is that a large majority of them float. In fact, all of them will float when you first put them into water. The way the digester is set up, you have your inlet and then you have the water inside of it. 
So let's go outside and check it out and I'll show you what I'm actually talking about. This is the inlet to the digester. And right now, you got water in here. Uh, actually, let me get you a close up. Okay, so here is the inlet to the digester. You can see the water level in there. Um, that water is to help protect us so that methane just isn't, just isn't leaking out everywhere. This inlet, at the very bottom of it, has an eight inch pipe. And that eight inch pipe goes all the way down in the digester stomach, down to the very bottom. And this white pipe used to not be here. So let's talk about what, why it wasn't there before. The idea was that you'd come out here by its design and you would load this section here with your manure and waste. And then as it gets waterlogged, it settles down to the bottom and goes into the digester. Well, the problem was with our stuff, it all floated. The buoyancy of all those materials, the rinds, cores, grass clippings, uh, especially the manure, uh, all those things actually floated. So instead of having the stuff sink down to the bottom, what happened is it all just plugged up in here. And I, I, got a, I actually got a toilet bowl plunger and I was actually trying to push it down to the very bottom and actually lost the rubber, <laughs> I lost the rubber uh, plunger. It's actually down in the digester. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it'll digest, but it's down there. So we had to think of a different way to deal with that. And that's where that white pipe comes in. So let's, let's talk about that. All right, all the way up at the barn, you can see there's a little overhang up there. And that overhang I put in last year so that uh, we can have what I called the horse toilet. And you can go back and check out some of our older videos on that. But essentially what it was is just a big IBC tote that we cut the top off of and put a sewage grinder pump down into. And then I, I loaded the cow manure and horse manure in there and I pumped up digestate from the digester, loaded it into there to kind of pre-inoculate it. And then I had the uh, septic tank, it had two, or the septic pump, it had two settings. One setting was recirculating, which would allow it to grind up stuff uh, and recirculate it in, in its own self. Uh, in back into the tank. So it would get sucked up in the pump, get ground up, and just drop right back down in the tank. And it would just do this over and over. And the idea is you let it run that way long enough until you see it's liquid enough. And then you turn another valve and the whole thing shoots down that white pipe that comes all the way from up there, down underground, and into the digester. And then it goes all the way down into the digester and actually curls at the very bottom. And it sends all that material down into the digester. And it worked. We did that, I tested it a few times, but it was an experiment test, meaning lots of work, lots of labor to get it where you needed it to, not something you wanna be doing full time you know, in a production environment. So uh, while that did work and it helped us deal with loading the digester, it was purely a temporary thing. And since then I've actually removed that uh, and the animals, they decided to walk through and break my pipe, the stands that were coming up above ground. So now I gotta fix that this year. But I really like the idea of having the horse toilet up front there. Oh, a rainbow. Oh, there's a full rainbow. That's cool. Uh, God's giving you guys a show here. Hopefully it comes up on camera. Oh, that's a full rainbow there. So I, I really like the idea of having the horse toilet up there because that's where you know I do all the stall cleaning and everything. It's all up there. So being able to dump the stuff right there do your business with it and send it down in the digester is a really cool thing. Now when uh, WSU, Washington State University was here, we actually told them that when we were using that, uh, it actually creates a burp in the system. Uh, we have an air release valve, so it's not that type of burp, but what happens is when you, when you pump it in, you actually disturb uh, the, uh, the, the stomach enough to where it burps like a baby, you know, you're, like, you're tapping the baby, you know, bleh, you know, it kind of burps. Well, we created a digester burp and it released a ton of methane into the storage tank. It was really quite awesome. They told us that we had stumbled on the same thing that they actually discovered in their research, which is when you agitate the digester, it re there's a, a layer of super saturated methane that's down in the water. It hasn't escaped yet. And when you disturb it, it allows that super saturated methane to come up and actually get captured and used. So, the idea of having a pump that actually shoves this stuff down into the digester is one that we really want to take advantage of because it is now scientifically proven that that is the, the way to get your, your methane to really get released. So when I first started looking at ways to uh, get material into the digester and solve this problem, I looked at a whole bunch of different ones. Um, the one that comes to mind the most though is a screw. 
uh, with an eight inch pipe down there, about that big. Uh, if you could get the right screw, you could actually load your material in there and then the screw would push it all the way down to the bottom and then it would come up on the outside of the pipe down on the stomach. So th that sounded so good to me. I, I called a few different manufacturers of, of the screws and each one of them said, no, that's not gonna work. And the reason why is the pitch on the blades and how they're actually set up on those screws, they're not meant to deal with buoyant, AKA floating material. So they're meant to push things up a hill, usually not to push them down, or they're meant to pull stuff back out, not to push stuff back down. So <clears throat> that's, that's a really, oh, that would have been so nice if that would have worked, but it's not going to. So the people who make those things for a living are saying, no, that's not gonna work. Uh, the guys with the septic pump that I got, I called them first too. They said the same thing. They said, uh, it's actually funny because I said, you know, your advertisement for your pump shows that it'll chew up a bra with a wire in it and everything. And like, you also threw some leather gloves in there and some blue jeans and your pump, it chewed it all up. And they said, yeah, well, it does do that. Um, but it's not going to work for your application because of straw and hay, stringy things. What's going to happen is those stringy things are going to get hit up against the pump and then they're going to clog it. And that's something that you're going to have to deal with. So I bought it anyway, <laughs> tried it. It worked really, really well until the straw and everything got in there and sure enough, it clogged it. And the reason why is because the grinder's on the bottom of the pump and then the straw would come up before it could, it could break. It could like, straw is like, well, think of it like this. It needs to break like this. It needs to break in half somewhere so that it can get sucked up into the, the uh, pump, which is, and then the, the grinder's inside of the pump. I hope that makes sense. And what was happening is instead of getting sucked up and breaking, it was getting sucked up and staying like this. And then another one came up and another one, and another one, another one, another one. And eventually it just clogs the whole thing, the pump stops and it's a safety uh, breaker switches and it turns off. So we've got to figure out the ultimate challenge here this year is to figure out how to get this material, apple cores, rinds, orange rinds, lemon rinds, watermelon rinds, uh, cantaloupe rhymes, uh, grape stems, uh, table scraps, pasta, uh, all those things that you normally throw away. We want to get them all in the digester because they make great digester food. And same thing with the manure. We want to get that manure in the, there as well. So ultimately my research has concluded that we need a shredder of some sort. You have to pre-process the material to get it down into the digester. Absolutely mandatory, got to do something. Oh, and um, another idea that's been floated is let it pre-compost. You don't want to do that. And the reason you don't want to do it is while it's composting, it's losing the nutritional value that the methanogens need in order to create uh, methane. So you might, you might get it to a point where you, you can get it in the digester, but it's lost the majority of what you're trying to capture. Uh, and it's, you're just essentially releasing greenhouse gases and everything, you know, your CO2, your methane, you're just letting them go when you're doing outdoor composting, whereas the digester actually captures the methane and then you get to use it. And then the byproduct of that is water vapor as it burns. So much better if you could capture it. Uh, yeah, let's head back inside because it's kind of cold out here. Ooh, it's nice and warm in here. So a major challenge with pre-processing is the amount of energy that it takes in order to pre-process the materials. Now, people have solved this problem for big farms and ranches. You can get what's called a muffin monster, which is a grinder pump that would grind everything I talked about up and pump it into this digester. It pumps like 10,000 gallons per hour though and takes 240 volts and quite a few amps, I think over 20 amps to run. What does that mean? It, and why, is, why does that matter? It means it takes a lot of energy to process the material to get it into the digester. There's a danger for, you know, what it means to us is when you go smaller, you're not processing as much material as those big farms are. These are like your dairy farms, right? That have thousands of head of cow and they're pumping 10,000 gallons of manure an hour because they have it, right? We don't, like we're gonna be pumping, you know, once a day a little bit, not a whole lot. So, if you have a big pump like the Muffin Monster that's designed for this very particular application, you're spending more energy to use it 
than you're going to get from it. That doesn't work. Conservation of energy, right? I can't get more out of the system than what I put into it, right? Just, I can't make energy. It's got to come from somewhere. So <clears throat> with all these solutions, we have to be very, very cognizant, very sensitive to the amount of energy that it's going to take to actually do the processing. And that's just going to be something that's going to take some math and sitting down. We're going to need to do some prototyping this year and actually really solve this problem. The cool thing is we solve it, we're going to be like the first people to solve it because other people haven't solved it yet. So maybe together, us normal people might be able to come up with a cool solution. So at least that's what I'm hoping for. We'll see if I'm right. So I hope you enjoyed this video about challenges we've had with the digester. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian.